Hi friends, a very good morning. I'm Vishnu Subramaniam from JavaSlabs.a. In this video, we are going to see how we can build a unit model using TIM and FastAir repositories. So first, let's go and quickly look at some of the subtopics that we will be uh, checking out today to understand how to be build how to build a unit architecture, right? Uh, so first thing we're going to look at is some of the important notes from the paper unit which is a very important paper and there are a lot of papers that refers to this paper if you are uh, looking into solving image segmentation problem this is one of the important paper that i would recommend you to read and then we will quickly look at how to train a unit model in fast AI, okay using fast AI unit learner and then we will see uh, how to build a unit model completely from scratch. We'll not be using FastAI unit learner, but we will be building our own encoder block, a decoder block, a decoder block. Inside that, we'll be building a unit block, and then we'll be composing both the encoder and decoder into a complete architecture. And then we will also see how we can apply something like discriminative uh, learning, where we have different learning rates for your encoder and decoder we'll see how that is applied if you have already used a unit learner then all these things come for free uh, it's just pre-built into the unit learner we'll try to see how we can build that using other libraries like tim we'll also uh, use the fast a trainer the or the learner okay and see how we can train using things like fine tune and uh, how we can use an attention uh, that we baked into the unit learner that we built okay and how we can use a different model or how we can add hyper columns and uh, there are other all there are also some other areas where we can explore okay this is going to be the high level uh, topics that which we are going to cover in this video okay so let's go to the unit paper notes before looking at the unit paper notes let's also look at the architecture of the unit okay what what is the unit majorly constitute of it contains a bunch of cnn layers okay this is a bunch of cnn layers and a max pooling layer at regular intervals this is what a regular uh, classifier model would look like okay you have a bunch of cnn layers then you apply along with uh, non-linear layers like relu and then you apply a max pooling and then you reduce the height and width of the of, of your images or the features right and you increase the number of channels let's say you, here you start with one in the in this case or normal images it will be three and then you increase it to 128 of the 6 5 12 024 right so this is what your encoder of a unit architecture is going to be and then from here what what we do is we uh, expand this features or that's called up, up convolution or uh, I think it's also called deconvolution. There are multiple names for it, but the idea is to simply expand the features in a way that you get back the image size. So if you look at an image segmentation problem, your model was a, the most important thing to understand an image segmentation problem is what is the input and what is the output. The, most of the times the input is going to be an image and the output is also going to be an image, probably a single channel if it's a binary uh, segmentation problem where you want to predict whether a single pixel has got a particular category or not let's say for example you are trying to build a segmentation problem that identifies where a car is located in a image so if a particular pixel belongs to a car then you want to say it as true right so what we want to do is we want to take an image extract all the features from it and then build back an image where each pixel can identify whether that pixel has a car or not, right? That's a simple example of what a unit does or any image segmentation uh, problem looks like. So what are some of the important notes from the unit paper? So unit architecture, right? It contains of two parts. One is the contracting part, which captures the context, which captures what all information is available in that particular image by uh, looking at complete image right that's what we would learn from uh, what cnn does and then a symmetric path that enables precise location right this is responsible for localization uh, we want to understand which pixel has a car it's not just about whether there is a car or not we also want to identify where exactly the car is right so there is a contracting path and there is a 
expanding path right the first what we do is we try to reduce the image to a single uh, vector of features and from that uh, vector of features or uh, from that tensor of features we again bring back the images where we can represent the uh, each pixel whether it has got a particular category or not right in this example we are trying to identify something like pneumothorax uh, pneumothorax is a disease that happens in lungs and we want to identify whether each pixel has that pneumothorax or not right but the problem domain is not of much importance to us we, we are just focusing on how the unit architecture works uh, the unit model is built on something called FCN, which is fully convolutional neural networks. How is it different from FCN? Is? FCN has this contracting layers, this left part, and then it has a bunch of fully connected layers. Okay, uh, that's what it, an FCN has. It's also a very interesting paper. I would recommend you to look at it. Important contribution of unit paper is use of a decoder with larger number of feature channels which results in decoding uh, similar to a contractor path. If you look at FCN, the, uh, the decoder is very smaller architecture. It is not something which is uh, which resembles pretty much to the encoder. Right? If you look at this decoder, you can see that each layer in the decoder has got a good number of channels. Right? Like say here 1024, it becomes 512. From 512, it becomes 256, and it becomes 128, and it becomes. This is pretty much similar to your encoder architecture. But in FCN, it was not that case. And in FCN, we use FC uh, fully connected layers. In unit, we don't use fully connected layers. And the other example, other important thing also is they used a huge amount of data augmentation because unit was primarily designed for implement for uh, image segmentation problem in the medical domain. But in the last few years, most of the Kaggle competitions that have image segmentation at its heart is mostly won by unit architectures but primarily it was built for medical data and in medical data uh, the number of available images are always less okay that's what are some of the key uh, notes from the unit paper now let's look at how we can build a simple unit model or i would say simple unit model i would say rather a modern state of art unit model in a very simple way how do we train that right uh, first is we have to build a data block. Okay, this is what we are doing here. And how do we build a data block? There is an amazing tutorial in FASTA uh, docs. And I've also made a video. I'll link it here so that you can watch it in case you want to understand how data blocks works. Right? We have built a data block. Data block. All it does is it goes and get all the images. And then it passes to image block and mask block. And we apply a bunch of transformations here. Uh, we say tfms is equal to none and i hope okay so if we are not applying any transformations what we are doing is we are applying the default data augmentation techniques that comes with it that comes with fast AI. and also we want to divide the masks by 255 since it's a binary mask we want the values to be either zero or one okay and then we show the entire images this entire building the data block i have explained in one of the previous video for which i'll add the link okay then let's go and quickly train a unit model state of art unit model i would say by how do you do that you by, by passing the data loader to the unit learner and by saying what do you want for an encoder so fast AI uses torch vision library in resnet 34 i think it comes from the fast by torch torch vision and we want to say how many uh, the, you want to build a decoder right the decoder is automatically built by unit learner we don't do anything here so we, we need to tell the unit learner uh, how many output categories are there in this case it's one binary and we have to specify the loss function okay because we don't use the default loss we don't want to use the default loss function and metrics here metrics is nice which we, which is what is used in Kaggle let's not worry about what is a metric basically the higher the metric the better the model is and then we will say uh, train the model by using fine tune what fine tune does it freezes the encoder trains the decoder for one epoch by default or you can change that and then it unfreezes and trains the model with something called discriminative learning uh, for another five epochs so total it is trained the model is trained for six epochs and we get a dice of 0.8 okay which should probably land us in uh, probably 100 or 200 rank in this competition okay now 
so we, we are going to build an architecture okay and what does the architecture can land us in right uh, so this architecture is inspired by uh, the architecture from the top winning solution of a Kaggle competition by a uh, Kaggler called best fitting okay he used a couple of architectures again architecture alone cannot keep you on the top there are other different things uh, there are other different data pipeline how do you handle things the Kaggler has used something called pseudo labeling for winning the competition there are multiple things that goes into it but in this video just focus on the unit architecture okay you can take a look at this unit architecture we'll not go into the details of this uh this is the rank he landed in 8651 okay so i've also participated in this competition and i landed somewhere in top 44th rank okay I, along with some of the gentlemen participated in this competition and we landed in uh 44th rank okay so we'll be trying to build that solution let's go back to this so uh first thing is we want to build an encoder right so if you look at the architecture diagram we know that we need a encoder which converts the image into a tensor right but then what also happens is we need the features uh, from different blocks right so when unit was first introduced the entire model was trained from scratch but over the period of years what happened is this part became a pre-trained model where we you where we ended up using something like vgg ResNet, inception uh, efficient net model and basically this is a pre-trained model and this side is a uh, bunch of convolution and non-convolution non-linear uh, activation layers stitched together and then the model is trained okay so and what we do is we concatenate the features from the encoder to the decoder different layers okay so what it basically means is we do not just want the last layer of your ImageNet model we also need the features intermediary features of multiple uh, la layers of your model right so what do we do for that is let's click from here that makes life easier uh, we create a model from tim repository okay tim has a bunch of pre-trained uh, not i'll not say a bunch a huge number of pre-trained models okay and we specify that features only equal to true what it does is instead of giving the last uh the tensor with thousand values it gives you the tensors across multiple layers right so let's see what it does let's take an example of resnet rs50 which is a different variant of resnet which uh meant to perform way better than the resnet model let's a couple of tricks added the typical resnet model okay and let's create a dummy tensor which kind of uh which is slightly relevant uh, which slightly looks like a batch of data of size 2 and uh, channels 3 and height and width 224 224 okay and we pass this batch of data through the model okay which is an encoder now if you can see we get the output of multiple layers okay it's it's quality f1 f2 f3 f4 f5 right we get features of multiple layers so traditionally what we this was done in different ways what we used to do or what i used to do in some of the older competitions or older older deep learning problems is i used to take a pre-trained model and then uh pick up the output of pick or just uh, keep the layer reassigned in different uh assigned in ways similar to this I'll say self dot con one is equal to encoder dot layer one. Okay, then what I can do is uh, for I create a forward layer. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm picking up a pre-trained model and then I'm sticking uh, each of the layers and then I'm taking the outputs and I'm keeping the outputs and passing the all the outputs of each feature. Like what happens when the input is passed to con four? Basically, input is the in output from the last layer, right? Output of the last layer is e three when you pass that you get an output e4 basically the features of the last convolution layer of the resnet model right so now instead of doing this this is done in different ways and i remember fast using a concept called pytorch hooks to build their unit model okay uh, which i believe is simplified drastically in by using tim all you have to say is say features only equal to true and then uh, you end up getting since the architecture is designed in a way 
uh, that it's easier for used usage in both image segmentation and object detection problem almost all the model has this parameter called features only equal to true once you say you once you pass the parameter called features only equal to true what happens is instead of getting the output of the last layer you get the output of all the intermediary blocks of the model okay so this is what we got so now let's go and build a unit block what is a unit block let's go and look at the diagram of the unit architecture each of this is called a unit block okay so basically they are a bunch of convolution layers and probably some attention layers with it right let's build that so before building that let's see how uh, best fitting has done that right if you go and look here there is something called decoder okay and uh, let's okay decoder is here and i can go and look at the implementation of the decoder right if you see there is basically a convolution batch norm layer okay which she has again defined it here okay basically what it has it has a it takes some input it applies to the convolution layer and then it applies to batch normalization and returns it okay uh, i'm just wondering where is the nonlinear layer okay it's a convolution block right and then what happens here if you look at the forward okay he's applying a nonlinear activation here right so this is what the decoder block looks like of one of the uh, top winning Kaggler, right so we will try to recreate this but you by taking advantage of fast AI conv layer and attention layers from tim repository so what we will do is uh, we will say that we need two typical convolution blocks okay which are uh, this convolution block is coming from the fast air repository okay sky i don't think i've imported anything so let me go and import a couple of things okay so let's go back to unit block which we are looking at okay and this this is the conv layer okay we can do a lot of customizations on the conv layer by changing these parameters okay and at the end it gives you a simple convolution block okay which has uh, let's see what it contains let's say we remove this okay and let's say convolution layer okay and we need to pass now some input channels and output channels let's say the input channels is three the first layer and let's say we want it to output 64 okay and we're not passing anything else so what it gives us is a uh, PyTorch bunch of bunch of PyTorch layers. One is convolution, one is batch norm, and one is a nonlinear layer, which is ReLU here. Okay, so we are creating two convolution blocks. Okay, so uh, whatever comes from the encoder, we want to pass through this, and then if there is an attention layer, then we want to pass the output of this convolution block to the attention layer. Okay, if it's not, then we want to use something called Noop, uh, which is something that I've again taken from FastAI. So basically, I want to try without uh, attention layer, right? So basically, all this function does is uh, it takes some input and returns the same input as an output, right? So I'm saying if attention is equal to none, then uh, use loop. If I'm passing some attention, then pass the output to that attention model, right? And what we do here is uh, whenever we get an input, we interpolate it basically that's like let's say that's opposite i would say a simple way to look at it is the opposite of max polling max polling converts like uh, eight into eight matrix say into a four into four matrix right uh, this does the reverse way four into four matrix it takes it converts into an eight into eight matrix and then we uh, pass it through each convolution layer okay and then if there is an attention layer we pass it through that and then we return this as an output okay and what we do is we use this unit block for here 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 okay it's basically uh, the number of times you have the layers from the resident we use that for unit blocks now let's go and look at hype we'll look we'll come to hyper columns a bit later before that let's try to uh, stitch both the encoder and decoder right because you want to take the outputs of the we want to pass the input to encoder extract all the features from encoder and then pass each of these features to your unit block okay so what do we do we define a bunch of unit blocks 
which we call it decoder one two three four five because if you remember we have five uh, encoded features right and then what we do for resnet uh, 50 or resnex 50 these are this are how the features looks basically 64 the last one e5 the last layer has 2048 channels the layer one which will have 1024 okay so what we do is we pass a decoder uh, an input of the previous layer in this case the center and we merge it with the last layer of the uh, encoder okay so if you think of it let's go to the diagram basically what we do is uh, we take the last layer of the encoder apply it some bunch of convolutional layers and then take the channel or take the features from the last layer of encoder and then merge them okay this is what we are doing okay uh, we concatenate these features the features of the uh, encoder along with the output of the last decoder okay and then pass it to a decoder block okay the center is just a bunch of convolution layers if you can see here you can see it's a convolution layer convolution layer not, nothing fancy okay then what happens we take the output of this decoder okay and add it to the output of the previous layer encoder okay which is, has got 1024 channels so basically the idea is to take output of one layer of encoder and pass it through a decoder take the output of that and pass it to the another decoder layer by concatenating it with the features from the corresponding encoder layer right so if you have understood unit architecture you would understand that uh, this is pretty straightforward basically what we are doing is we are passing an image to a bunch of uh, convolution layers and we take the outputs of each convolution blocks and then merge it with the decoder blocks in the decoder okay so uh, then we define the complete unit model okay in the unit model what we do is we define an encoder and a decoder okay and we take the input here and we pass it to the encoder and then we take all the features and pass it to the decoder i could have clubbed it here itself this the entire code here itself but the reason i want to do this is i want to be able to split all the parameters of encoder into a separate group and decoder into a separate group so that i can use discriminative learning okay so i create uh, something called unit splitter okay and i say uh, give me all the parameters of encoder and all the parameters of param decoder in two different groups okay so this lets me train the model and this lets me uh, basically freeze the encoder and then uh, train just the decoder or com unfreeze a complete model and then train the model okay and this is what happens between the unit in the unit architecture of course is one thing which we did not cover we can also say if hypercolumns is true then uh, implement hyper hypercolumns okay what is hypercolumns basically what we do here is uh, we calculate something called hypercolumns uh, hyper features right so best way to look at it is so again we we are looking at the solution from best fitting and this is an architecture pretty similar to which what we have implemented okay and what we are doing is uh, we are taking the output of each decoder okay and we are interpolating it and concatenating it right so basically the output of each decoder okay combined together so the idea is the the last layer will have a clarity of the complete uh, or or both the context and localization features so that it will give a better result okay that's the idea that's the idea of hyper columns and how do we implement it we take the uh, features of d1 d2 d3 d4 d5 and pass it something called calculate hyper features okay and then what we do is we just come we uh, concatenate all these different tensors into one single large tensor okay but in order to do that we have to solve one problem that these are all of different shapes right uh, for example the height will be something like 
Um, let's take a look at it. Okay, if you look here, you can see that the height is 104, it's 200, uh, it's 392, right? If you want to concatenate these tensors into one single tensor, we have to make the smallest tensor to the size of the largest tensor before we can concatenate it, right? To do that, what we do is we again use the interpolation technique. Okay, we interpolate all the smaller uh, tensor to the largest tensor, which is D1, which is the output of the last decoder layer, which is basically the size of your image. Okay, we say the take the D2, okay, and scale it by two. Basically, it'll be something like let's say your image size is 224. It'll be half of it. We want to convert into two times. Okay, and the last one D5, which will be the smallest, okay, by a scale factor of 16. Okay, let's say if it's uh, image size is 512, I think it should be the last layer should be something of 32. Okay, and then what do we do? We take all, we take this huge tensor and pass it through a convolution layer. Okay, that's what the logic is. So when the when hypercolumns is true, the last layer, the size increases, so we want to reduce it. Uh, so we have a different convolution block. If hypercolumn is false, then we have a different convolution block. That's what happens in hypercolumn features. Okay, so why do we do all these things? Now, uh, what what the architecture allows us use of different encoders. Okay, let's say for example, instead of uh, using the ResNix 50, we can simply say we want ResNix 34, or we can say we want ResNix 18, we want ResNix 121, or ResNix or ResNix RS. Or we can use even models like efficient net, but we have to make some tweaks to this uh, unit architecture. Why we have to make some tweaks? Because these numbers would have changed, right? The number of channels would have changed. If we can fix these channels, then the entire architecture would work as it is, right? And then what we do once we have, now we have everything, right? We have a data loader we created from the data block. Now we have our own unit model, okay? Now we can train it uh, using a couple of techniques, right? So what we do, we create a learner. We are not creating a unit learner now. We are creating a simple fast AI learner. And we uh, create our model, okay? We say the number of channels that we want in the decoder is 32. The expansion for uh, ResNet 34, ResNet 18, it'll be one. For anything above ResNet 34, it'll be expansion will be five, which would decide how much uh, channels sh should go in. Okay, basically that will have an impact on uh, the output of the encoders basically. I think we had the, okay, let's go and look at, it's here, okay. So if it was expansion is one, that is ResNet 18 or ResNet 34, then this will be uh, slightly smaller. The largest one will have only 512 channels. Okay, and then we say we want to train ResNet 34 model, loss function, uh, matrix dice, and then we need to use a splitter, otherwise this, Thing will fail okay and then we can say learn dot fine tune our model is getting trained we are getting 78 let's also look at uh, how much did we get dice score we got 0.8 and now in the unit model that we built we are getting 78 okay let's train i mean it's not a competition we're just uh trying out to understand how to build a unit uh using demand some of the fast air blocks right and then we use with attention we there are multiple attention layers that we can use right let's go and look at that i have made some small notes for that okay uh, so tim has got something called get attention okay which we can use and grab one of these attention modules okay uh, we are using that attention by saying get attention pass this to the unit model that we have built okay and then the attention kicks in and we can see there's a slight improvement in the model okay and then now we don't want to use ResNet 34. Let's say we want to try with a larger model like ResNet RS50. Okay, we do it and then we our dice score improves. Then we have built hyper columns which we want to give a try and it goes up to 0.8 dice score. Okay. Uh, when I was training this model or when I was participating in this Kaggle competition, I had a, uh, I felt like only training the decoder itself gives a good score okay so i want what i wanted to do is i want to freeze the encoder i don't want to use the 
fine tune anymore i want to try with fit one cycle okay and since the decoder doesn't not does not know anything it's i'm training the model from scratch i want to use a larger learning rate okay so I, what i want to do is i want to just train the decoder for 10 epochs and with the learning rate of 1.2 and as i remembered i was able to reach to 815 okay and then uh, in that kaggle competition what was happening also was whenever you increase the image resolution your dice value also increases the higher the resolution it is better yeah, okay so i tried 512 i this is all very quick experimentation okay it, basically the idea is when you uh, kind of structure the pipeline you can quickly do multiple experimentations i did some experimentation on 512 768 yeah okay and uh, then we also have a couple of areas that we would like to explore right once the video is done uh, you want to go you want to go and try some more thing uh, try to see if what happens when you change the uh, resonant model to efficient model okay or what you can do is uh, change the output channels in the unit block that we created similar to the paper what i mean is if you look at the paper right there's one important point that was made unit paper uh, decoder with large number of feature channel which result in decode layer being similar to contracting encoder path if you observe this what happens is the channels are like here 512 256 128 and 64 in our case we kind of kept a consistent channels which is 32 right see if you can change that I, even fast air unit architecture follows something pretty similar to what is available in the paper but i've seen a lot of kaggle competitors having the channels as fixed maybe you can try to run few experiments to understand if that has an impact okay and then i was also uh, running few more experiments on the same data set okay uh, one is saying okay let's not let's not use fit one cycle let's just use fit and let's try with a uh, 1e minus 4 and no no freezing no discriminative learning anything just train the entire model right for 30 epochs the reason why i did is the third winner of the competition said he did not use any tricks no learning rates i learning rate schedulers right he just used adam with learning rate 1e minus 4 and he trained a model for 30 epochs so i thought let me also try that okay and i used the image size of 512 okay and it was reaching the best model was reaching uh 284 if i can remember correctly i think it's 837 okay it reached 842 okay probably in the next few videos right that i will be making in the future i'll also see if i can make a submission to kaggle it's old but still we can make submission and see how these models actually uh, end up resulting in the kaggle leaderboard i hope you enjoyed watching the video if you have any uh, doubts or if you have any feedback or suggestions please share it in the comments or you can end up writing an email to hello at javislabs.ai uh, thanks for watching uh, have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.